In this episode of Dermatologist Talks Science of Beauty, we're going to be talking about a recent movement that's been trending on social media. You probably have seen it or heard about it, acne positivity. The acne positivity movement has been making its rounds on social media since early 2018, when activists such as hashtag Free the Pimple founder Lou Northcote started building a movement online to destigmatize acne and empower others to embrace their skin. Acne positivity is in some ways an extension of the body positivity movement, in which it promotes acceptance of all skin regardless of its state. The hallmarks of the movement are unfiltered, makeup-free photos that showcase their natural skin and encouraging others to do the same. Dr. Teo, as a dermatologist who's probably seen countless of acne cases in your practice, what do you think of acne positivity? Is it something that we should glorify? Well, Chelsea, acne positivity, while uh, lightly starting from a place where the individual had good intentions to begin with, uh, unfortunately, is, is not a sound movement. From a dermatologist's perspective, acne is not a cosmetic issue. The cause of acne is truly medical, and it has to do with genetically induced inflammation uh, present in the skin of acne sufferers. Besides the fact that it can be very distressing and painful, especially with severe forms of cystic acne, it can also lead to psychosocial problems such as affecting one's self-esteem and is also linked to conditions like depression, anxiety, and in severe cases, uh, suicidal ideation. This has nothing to do with whether you're being positive about acne or, or not, although it's you know likely easy to, to write the trend that it's okay to have acne, it is not something that's really going in the right direction. This is because the severity of acne can be graded and if you have moderate to severe acne, it's very likely you started with mild acne and you would not have developed severe acne overnight. Moderate to severe acne tends to be cystic in nature and can lead to bleeding, pus, abscess formation. An abscess is essentially a collection of pus under the skin. And in someone with very severe cystic acne, a condition known as acne fulminance, um, which can be uh, life-threatening because it can lead to sepsis or infection of the bloodstream. It can also occur. A lot of the dramatic cases that I have seen on social media and under the acne positivity movement are really semi-dermatological emergencies, especially those who look like they have abscesses under their skin. And it can be potentially life-threatening because acne cysts uh, at the end of the day are infected and are filled with pus, teeming with bacteria, and the face, for example, is connected by a series of sinuses and these can get infected and you can get uh, thrombotic events, which can be life-threatening as well. Although these are typically rare, it's important not to dismiss severe cases of cystic acne as you know, simply a case where you're trying to shame the individual because it is not. Uh, additionally, uh, abscesses, if uncontrolled, will lead to systemic inflammation and sepsis, causing fever and um, additionally pus and blood that is discharging from the acne uh, can stay in the pillowcase and, and certainly this will disrupt the individual's life and it's very distressing. The key thing here is that while it is very timely for us to remind the public that acne is not a cosmetic issue and hence it should not be treated by beauticians and non-medical evidence-based therapies, it is important for us to emphasize the relevance of evidence-based medical treatment for acne. Acne is 100% treatable, so there is no need to be, positive, to be positive about something that can be treated. In severe cases of cystic acne, isotretinoin, which should be used under medical supervision, is a very effective treatment and it is certainly necessary to inform the public of such an option. 
In my opinion, what's more important beyond acne positivity is positivity in general. This should apply to individuals who are suffering from all types of skin conditions. As dermatologists, we are acutely aware of the psychosocial effects of visible skin and hair disorders. Um, the impact of these on the psyche of an individual、um, who has a dermatological condition. The key here is that we do not advocate ignoring the condition or pretending that everything is okay, as this can have disastrous and dangerous results. This is because the skin is a barrier against the external environment, and you have to ensure that it is healthy. Shaming individuals with skin conditions is certainly inappropriate, and this goes for body shaming and all other types of humiliation and bullying. Nevertheless, I feel that it is important to draw the line at recommending appropriate medical treatment, as acne is imminently treatable with medications. I have personally never encountered acne that could not be treated and was not treated successfully, and I can speak for the rest of the, my dermatologist colleagues as well. The key here is that we have to acknowledge the significant amount of psychosocial distress that acne patients undergo, and focus more on educating people who don't have acne and who can be very insensitive sometimes in passing these comments. I personally have heard these testimonies from my patients who feel terrible simply because of these insensitive comments. And if you have acne on your face, you certainly don't need anyone to comment on it or to ask why you're having that. Because、uh, I think you know doing so simply、um, shows a, a, a you know some level of ignorance and insensitivity. And you know this same. Uh, principle applies for anyone with、um, a sort of visible imperfection or disability.、And、I think this is an important message that we we should take home today. Well, there you have it. That about sums up this dermatologist flash briefing. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next episode.